Just because you have hip pain does not mean you need surgery. Hello everybody, this is Wusu MD, and today we're gonna to talk about femoral acetabular impingement, also known as FAI, also known as a labral tear, uh, and as well as uh, pain in the front of your hip. First thing we need to know is, what is your femur? Your femur is your big thigh bone here, um, and I'm just gonna orient you to this. This is a right hip, uh, kind of a, a half of a hip, and here is your greater trope. That's the bone that you can feel when you touch the side of your hip. And here is your acetabulum as well as your, your hemipelvis or half of your pelvis. So here's the front, the back, and here's the right side, okay? So the femur goes across here. The femur is connected to the ball. And then the socket is gonna be your acetabulum that's connected to your pelvis, all right? So we have femur, femoral, acetabular, and then impingement. Anytime we talk about impingement, we're really just talking about pinching. And what is happening? We have a bone that is basically abutting another bone, and somewhere in between there is some soft tissue that is getting pinched, and it doesn't like it. That's when you have pain. Sometimes when you have this impingement, as in for FAI, it's the labrum that is, is actually getting pinched and squeezed, and sometimes that labrum can tear off the acetabulum. What is the labrum? Fantastic question, let me go into it. So once again, with our orientation, this is a right hip with the side here. As we zoom in, we have our cup and this ring of tissue is your labrum. I'm gonna dislocate this hip just to show you what's going on with the labrum. We have the inside of your socket in which we have your cartilage that comes here and that cartilage is confluent with the labrum itself. So the labrum, actually deepens the acetabulum. It makes it so that the acetabulum goes deeper. It has, it's almost like a check ring on the outside of the acetabulum. Also, that labrum provides stability. So when you're, I'm gonna relocate this hip. So as you're moving about, that labrum is gonna keep your, is gonna uh, assist with the stability of your hip, uh, keeping things in check. Another thing that the labrum does is it provides a suction cup. And so that the, the head is actually suctioned into the acetabulum because there's a thin uh, amount of fluid, joint fluid that's in there. And with that suction, whenever you're putting all of your body weight through your hip, what is actually happening is your body weight is not just focused on the top of your hip, but also like kind of 360 around in that joint because of the suction. So this acetabulum is doing all of these things to help stabilize your hip redistribute the pressure and uh, provide you with smooth movement. So if there's a tear or problem with that labrum, then you tend to have a problem with this whole area. Um, so going back to impingement, there's uh, two general causes of this impingement. And what happens is you, there are some of us that have a certain morphology. The reason I say morphology instead of pathology is that uh, there are nor people that have normal morphology in which they have extra bumps on different parts of their body. So for this acetabulum impingement, what we have is this. We have a femur here, and the femur is designed to have a sulcus where it, the neck of the femur meets the head on both sides. And the reason that that sulcus is important is because whenever you have a, a constrained joint or constrained hip and you have this sulcus that's present, when you flex it up, it still provides space in between the acetabulum and the femoral head and neck. If we were to take away this sulcus, like so think of this as an ice cream cone, and this is the ice cream on top, we want the ice cream to be centered, and we push that to the side, or we create this bump here. Now when we do the same flex, we have this impingement in which the neck is bumping into the acetabulum. And what is happening is that pinching is the labrum that lies right across there. So as that neck comes in, it hits the labrum. The other thing that can cause impingement is if you have over coverage of your acetabulum. So even if you don't have a bump on your neck, you can still have impinging. So this bump, we refer to it as a CAM bump, C-A-M. And that is uh, if you do mechanics or you do woodwork, uh, there are certain things called a, a CAM uh, screw in which it, it provides um, uh, a little bit more of a leverage here, but that leverage is not giving us what we want on uh, our, in our hip joint. So again, in explaining impingement with this model, 
Again, this is the right side. Impingement occurs when you are flexing your hip. And so when we're flexing our hip, the neck of our femur is hitting that labrum. And so this can happen if you're sitting down, if you're riding in a car for a prolonged period of time, if you're squatting or doing other exercises like lunging that are causing your hip to be flexed. And then also people can have this pain in the front of their hip simply from running. So sometimes we'll have long distance runners. Even though their hip is not flexing quite as much, they'll still have this pain and I'll explain why. Once again, this is a model of the hip. This is the right side, but this model has some muscles that are attached to it. This is the greater troke, the outside of your hip that you can touch and feel, and this is the front. So when you have a labral tear, and that labral tear is gonna now bring in some micro instability in your hip. When you're unstable, your muscles are generally the things that are gonna to wanna to help tighten to stabilize that joint. So a major stabilizing force of the, of the hip joint is your iliopsoas. So this is your, your iliacus muscle along your ilium, and this is the psoas. This muscle actually comes up, up your spine and is a muscle that is commonly uh, causes people uh, pain because we spent so much of our time sitting down and the muscle is in a contracted position. Um, and then this muscle will get weak. So now imagine that you're torn in the front, your labrum is torn in the front, and this iliopsoas rises right over that labrum. So this is going to be the primary uh, second or the secondary stabilizer after your labrum is torn. And so this muscle, what happens is it gets shortened and it always feels like it needs to contract in order to provide you stability. Now, if you've ever been pulling multiple all-nighters, you've gone on a trip to Vegas, you know what happens when you do not get rest. So when this muscle does not get rest, it actually gets weak and it actually gets less effective. And so now you have pain in the front. And then you also, when we look to the side, these are your glute medius. These are also stabilizing uh, forces in your hip. These muscles also get, are, become painful and they contract and they tighten. So now we have pain in the front, we also have pain in the side, and weakness. And so part of the therapy that we're gonna do is to increase the strength as well as the length of your iliopsoas as well as your glute medius. So let's talk about treatments. We have the non-surgical route and we have the surgical route. If we do the non-surgical route, what we're doing is we're not fixing the acetabular labrum, but as I mentioned, there are a number of other muscles around the hip that are causing you a significant amount of pain. So well, the treatment for that is to get those muscles to start functioning in a more efficient way. And in this way, we can significantly reduce the amount of pain that people are in and get them to a lifestyle that they uh, can enjoy again and go forth. However, in this case, for this specific injury, it does tend to have about a 30 to maybe 35% positivity rate in which people can get back to the level of activity that they want. The reason is we still have this ongoing instability of the hip. So uh, to mention surgical treatment, our goal for surgical treatment is to actually repair the labrum in which we will take this torn labrum here and put anchors to actually reattach the labrum to the acetabulum, providing that stability. But still, we had the problem of this impingement. And so what we'll also do, we will shave down this cam morphology here, this bump, and by shaving it down, we will restore this sulcus here, and sometimes we'll also shave back the acetabular rim to pull it back. So now there's plenty of space for movement and it will not cause any pinching. So I know what you're thinking. I started off saying, just because you have hip pain does not mean you have needed surgery. And I will say that if you do have femoral acetabular impingement and a labral tear that's symptomatic, that surgery I do recommend is the best line of treatment. However, just because you have pain in the front of your hip does not necessarily mean you have femoral acetabular impingement. Again, looking at the model, most Americans have pain somewhere in the front here because of a tight iliopsoas. This iliopsoas being tight, remember it runs up your spine, 
can also cause pain in your back. The reason for that is now your back muscles are trying to counteract the tight front muscles of your iliopsoas and also causing different differential pelvic tilting. And so you either are tight in the front and your back has to compensate for you to keep your balance or, uh, or things break down in another way. So much of what you can do to improve your um, functioning of your hip is actually to do a series of exercises that help to lengthen and strengthen your iliopsoas. Thank you.